I'm Adam. And I'm Woody. And this, and this is, is Where There's, where a, there's a Williams, Williams a There's a Way. Hey, Woody, have you ever been to the Statue of Liberty? Nah, it gets a bit too crowded in big metal contraptions for me. Do you suffer from a bit of claustrophobia? That's not it at all. People get weird when they're too close to tigers. It's a bit of a stigma and not worth it. That doesn't seem fair. You shouldn't have to change your plans because other people don't like something. Unfortunately, that's how ignorance works. They are afraid of what they don't know. Afraid of people from different places. The whole point of the Statue of Liberty and Battery Island is accepting people from new places. It's a symbol of American immigrants. Exactly. In today's book, the family of an Italian immigrant goes to the Statue of Liberty to celebrate her birthday. Let's get started. A Picnic in October by Eve Bunting, illustrated by Nancy Carpenter. Dad and Mom and I take the bus to Battery Park. We're carrying the stuff for the birthday picnic. Mom has the cake. It's October 28th, bright and sharp and cold. Really cold. Why do we have to do this? I ask Mom. A picnic in October? It's dumb. This is the way Grandma wants it, Mom says. And that's the end of it. When we get to Battery Park, I see Grandma right away. She's wearing her bright green coat. The wind ruffles the fake fur collar around her neck. Grandpa's with her, and Uncle Joe and Aunt Louise, and my cousins, Rosa and Mike. They're loaded with picnic stuff, too. We all hug and kiss. Grandpa reaches inside his overcoat and gives Rosa and Mike and me licorice sticks. He keeps a row of them in his top jacket pocket the way other people keep pens. He's wearing his usual black hat. Rosa says he wears the hat to bed, but I don't think so. We better hurry and get in the ferry line, Aunt Louise says. I look at the line and I can see we're going to have a long wait. We stomp our feet and blow on our hands. Across on the island, the Statue of Liberty stands, white and gleaming. She was all spruced up a few years back, Grandma says. She sure looks good for her age. Grandpa strokes Grandma's cheek. Like you, sweetheart, he says. Grandpa can be really soppy. Mike's holding the cake now, in its see-through container. Remember last year? Remember, trying to get all the candles to fit on here? I nod. We only brought ten this time. Grandma says when you're real old, you don't care about having one for every year, anyway. A woman with a thick braid of black hair pulls at my arm. She's wearing a long colored skirt that brushes the ground beneath her coat. There's a little girl with her and a man in loose white pants that flap in the wind. The woman tugs harder on my arm and points to the ferry, which is chugging away from the dock. She's talking to me and I don't understand the words, but I can see that she's worried. What's she say? Mike asks me. I think she's worried because the boat's gone, I say. I smile at the woman. It's okay, I say. There'll be another boat. I point at the ferry, then at the end of the line, then back at the ferry. I make a turnaround sweep with my arm. Another will come. She smiles and nods. I can tell she understands and feels better. Did your family have any traditions that you didn't really understand as a kid? It wasn't that I didn't understand it, but every year we would go visit my great grandma for her birthday. She lived to be a hundred years old. I don't understand how that is confusing. It was hard for me because I didn't know most of the people that were there. All that I knew was that I was related to them in some way, but didn't exactly know how or where the people were coming from. Did you at least have fun when you got there? Sometimes those are the types of things that you do where you aren't very excited to do them, but once you get there, you have fun. It was always a potluck, so there was always food. I got to eat a lot, but then my little sister and I usually got bored and had to make up some sort of game. That doesn't sound too bad. At least you got food. You know how I feel about that. My family events were always surrounding a meal also. Why do you think that is? Why does it always have to be about a meal? I think that's the way it should be. Look at this family. They're planning on having a picnic. Mike Snickers. Man, you looked like a third base umpire, waving your arms like that. You looked like a dork. 
Don't be rude, Mike. Grandma says. Tony was being kind. You are not being kind. I wiggle my ears at Mike, and that makes him laugh. So Grandma gives him another disappointing stare. The next ferry comes and we manage to squeeze on. I watch for the woman and her family, but they don't make it onto this boat. I hope they don't give up. The grown-ups rush inside where it's warm, but we just put our stuff in there and run to the front of the boat. We pretend to throw up over the railing. There's no way up at the bow, so we spit into the wind and see who it blows back on. Spit is lucky. Liberty Island is coming closer. The statue is getting bigger. We straggle off at the dock, lugging the picnic stuff. The island is crowded, but Dad finds a grassy spot and the grown-ups spread the blankets. The three of us run around. That's the Veranzo Bridge, I say. Mike points. There's Brooklyn. Brooklyn is where Mike and Rosa live. Sailboats dip into the wind. There's Ellis Island. Rosa says in a reading kind of way. 17 million immigrants entered the United States of America through Ellis Island. We learned that in school. You told us that last year, I say. Rosa's offended. So? Tony, Rosa, Mike, Dad calls. Shout time. Mike says. We all sit on the blankets except for Grandma and Grandpa. We brought the folding chairs for them. There's a ton of food. Our paper plates keep blowing away. We try throwing them back like frisbees, but the wind carries them in the other direction and we have to chase them again. We dump them in the trash. The ginger ale is so cold it burns my throat. Lady Liberty gazes down on us with her calm old eyes. You'd think she'd get tired holding her arm up like that, Rosa says. I groan. Give us a break. She's not real. Grandma frowns. She's not alive, if that's what you mean. But she's certainly real. And so is what she stands for. She smiles at Grandpa. It's time for the birthday. Like the candles, Luigi. I didn't realize that you could just hang out at the statue's feet. Have you ever been there? My wife and I went a long time ago. But we just went to Ellis Island and got a walk around the National Immigration Museum. So you went all the way there and didn't go up the statue? Yeah, we were actually on a trip to Philadelphia at the time and rode the train into New York for the day. We didn't have enough time to go to the statue. That seems like a shame. I think that we always assumed that we would come back and do it another time. I try to never leave something on the plate. Always eat it all because you never know when you're going to get another chance. The wind blows out every match Grandpa lights. The candles lean toward Staten Island and the wicks get stuck in the frosting. We straighten them and make a hand harrier between them and the wind. It's a miracle they stay lit while Dad lifts the cake for Grandma to blow them out. They go with one huff when we take our hands away. Brava, bella, Grandpa cries. Brava means you're wonderful in Italian. Bella means beautiful. Grandpa's being soppy again. Dad refills our paper cups and we stand to face Lady Liberty. Happy birthday! We shout. We touch cups and drink. When I came from the old country, Grandma says, I came out here and he said, Thank you, Lady Liberty. Thank you for taking me. He spoke in Italian, of course, but she understands all languages. This is America. And I am here. And I am part of it. I thought. She says this every time. Grandma thinks the statue is such a big deal. Grandpa leads us in the happy birthday song to Lady Liberty, and then Grandma begins to recite the famous words. Give me your time, your poor, your adult mess is yearning to breed free. There's more. She recites them here on Lady Liberty's birthday every single year. Not much wonder she knows them by heart. Rosa does too. She's very uppity about it. Grandma blows kisses, so we feel we have to. I sincerely hope no one is watching. After that, we pack up what's left of the picnic and walk to the back part of the island, called the mall. There's a birthday program there too. A brass band is playing. The veterans of foreign wars are having a parade. What a party Lady Liberty's having. We stay for a while, and then we come back around. 
I see the woman in her long, bright skirt with the man and the little girl. I grin. Look, there she is. They made it, I say. They got the ferry. Grandma nods. I bet they're new Americans. I know how they feel. They're staring up at the statue, and then the man says something, and they hold hands and bow their heads. The way they stand, so still, so respectful, so, so peaceful, makes me choke up. Maybe they've come to the end of a long journey, farther than just from Battery Park to Liberty Island. I put my arm around Grandma and hold my cup of ginger ale up to Lady Liberty. I think I'm seeing her for the very first time. Brava, Bella, I say. Happy birthday. And I don't care who's watching. I was a bit confused. At what? I thought this family was going to celebrate the grandma's birthday. Nope, they were celebrating the Statue of Liberty's birthday. I didn't know that people did that. It seems like the grandma is very proud of her status as an American. And because she went through the whole immigration experience, she appreciate what it means even more. So she not only in love with the Lady Liberty, but everything that she stands for. Exactly. When my parents moved here from Bangladesh, they didn't come through Ellis Island. So they didn't get to experience the hustle and bustle of such a big city. They didn't miss it at all. My parents moved here from Dhaka, which is bigger than New York City. Bigger than New York City? Holy jeez. Yep. Dhaka is a very densely populated. My parents wanted to live somewhere with a little more space. That's why they moved to a small town of Dallas. They really like the wide open space. Now, I think you're just trying to mess with me. Dallas isn't a small town. They probably moved to Texas for the barbecue. You're probably right. They always love the food here. Spe speaking of loving things, if you liked or even loved this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'm Adam. I'm Woody. And, and this, this is Where There's, there's a Williams, Williams there's, a there's a Way. Did you know by most estimates, the Copper Statue of Liberty has been hit by 600 bolts of lightning every year since it was assembled in New York Harbor. Jay Fine was the first person to photograph this phenomenon when he captured this image in 2010.